So I've been lurking on this subreddit for a while and I finally broke down and made an account because frankly I have too many neckbeard experiences and my friends are tired of my salt. I am the textbook definition of beard bait, and have been ever since I turned 14, so going on 10 years now. I've been deep into the hellhole which is anime since ye olde days of blockbuster video. I love games of both the video and card varieties. I'm a regular congoer and avid cosplayer, so much so that I've migrated from just walking the floor in costume to competing and presenting at conventions. When not in cosplay, I eagerly experiment in other fun niche fashions such as steampunk, marigeral, and lolita. Add to all that my double major in environmental science and English literature, which covers both sides of the competing intellectual neckbud factions, and a dollop of an overly bubbly demeanor. And you can see why I suffer an onslaught of neckus bear dickus. Seeing as this is my very first reddit post and all of ever I thought it would be prudent to start off with a low key beard encounter that happened fairly recently. It goes a little something like this. So I play somewhat uncommon trading card game. I say somewhat because trying to find anything besides magic, Pokemon, or Yu-Gi-Oh at a store not specializing in cards is a shot in the dark but I digress, and my favorite local store for it very recently closed. They do have a sister branch only 10 minutes away but my branch was specifically the gaming branch of the store and the sister branch doesn't have nearly enough stock or variety to keep me happy for long. So I have started a quest to find a new favorite store that isn't an hour and a half away at the closest. In my most recent bout of frantic googling I found a store that was about 30 minutes away from me that I had never been to and decided to try my luck. The store seemed pretty average when I pulled up in my car. It was your basic hole in the wall at the end of a strip mall with the windows covered in so many gaming promotional posters that you can't even see in. Now as I mentioned before I have a pretty varied kind of fashion sense but I treat trying out a new store a bit like a job interview and I learned a long time ago not to make too heavy of an impression on the first encounter. So I was keeping it low key but still very me, which meant basically a flowy sundress, a cardigan, and a bow headband. Very cute, very girly, very not what people are used to seeing in a game shop. I was also alone for this quest. Not ideal to be sure, I don't like going to game shops alone until I'm very comfortable there after years of bad experiences, but no one was free and with how busy I am with work I knew I wouldn't get another chance for a while, so, stealing my nerves, I left the car and proceeded with caution to the door. I knew immediately upon entering that I would once again come up empty in my search for the coveted trading card game. It was obvious that this shop's specialty was Warhammer. The only cards on display were a case of magic and a smattering of Pokemon at the store counter and the rest of the store was covered, floor to ceiling, in Warhammer memorabilia. Now I have no problem with Warhammer, I can see the appeal though I've never tried it myself, but it is very much not what I was looking for. My disappointment must have shown on my face because the cashier asked if there was anything he could help me with in a worried tone. I smiled politely and asked about my card game and the guy hissed through his teeth in the way of every retail worker who knows they don't have something. I told him it was fine but he was very sweet and offered to text some of the other shops he knows to see if anyone had stuff in stock. Honestly I was touched and accepted his offer. I decided to look around the shop to see if there was anything there that caught my interest because if the cashier was going to go out of his way for me then I was going to buy something to make it worth his effort. I had just moved to the wall covered in various figures and paints to see if anything caught my eye. I think some could look really neat when incorporated in steampunk props. Please don't witch hunt me over it. When the herd arrived, a whole bevy of beards shoved their way through the door of this little game shop. I'm talking 8-12 full grown neckbirds of the most stringent definition. There were fedoras galore, black and red cargo pants covered in chains, at least 4 trench coats with ominous food splotches all over anime wafer shirts, even one a hego shirt, you, a hearty mix of greasy ponytails and ill-conceived middle parts, and every single one of them had some form of beard on his neck. It was a gloriously horrifying sight, they all shuffled over to the tables at one side of the store, the ones specifically made for Warhammer games, matches, toting with them boxes of figures as well as salty snacks and the illustrious dew of mountain. It was when they loudly started unloading their bounty of figures and munchies that I came to the realization that while there had been entering 
The other two customers that had been in the shop when I had come in had exited. That left me alone in a game shop with a bunch of neckbuds and one distracted cashier. I felt a pit drop into my stomach. This was a cringe-worthy repressed memory in the making and I already have enough of those to deal with. Thank you very much. Luckily, at the moment, most of the herd hadn't yet noticed me, being too preoccupied with setting up what must be a weekly game to pay attention to anyone else in the store. I know many neckbuds have motion-based vision when it comes to prowling for M ladies, so if I just stood still they wouldn't notice me. But eventually one of the grease beasts would look up from his cheetahs and see a small girl in a dress and then they would all be onto me, with a pit in my stomach. I came to the conclusion that my best chance of getting out of this unscarred was to make a break to the relative safety of nice cashier man and his close proximity to the door. I still wanted his intel but if I needed to bolt, neck I was going to. I took a steadying breath and straightened my posture, putting on my best resting bitch face. I find looking like you could easily commit white collar murder and not care is a good enough deterrent for the more lily livered of beards. With that thought in mind I slowly wandered back to the front counter, hugging the wall shelves and not letting my eyes stray over to the conglomerate over at the play tables. I made it to the counter with no issue, thank goodness, and found that nice cashier guy was on the desk computer on Facebook with 5 messenger boxes open. He told me the first 3 places he tried also didn't stock it, the 4th one did but they only had one box, and he was still waiting on the last one to get back to him but he had a good feeling. I thanked him profusely for his efforts and he asked me to wait just a few more minutes to see if this other shopkeeper would respond. I reluctantly agreed to wait it out. I really didn't want to be in there with the horde any longer than necessary but my thirst for those sweet sweet cards won out. The cashier, bless him really he was a gem, started talking to me about my favorite trading card game, just the basic what decks I ran and why, if I'm casual or competitive. If I play anything other trading card games or if it's just this one, I was happy to babble onto him about my cards. I got into it fairly recently and I run some fun but not meter decks. I'm pretty casual but I do compete on occasion and I managed to get to the regional tournament this year but didn't place. And that I used to be really competitive in Yu-Gi-Oh but I switched to this after Yu-Gi-Oh stopped being fun for me. I was surprised that he actually knew a bit about the trading card game, which was very cool, and that he had some options for some sleeves and dice that might complement my deck. I was so distracted by this conversation that I didn't notice the imminent beard encounter until it was too late. I smelled him before I saw him, my back was turned to the swarm as I was having my chat with the cashier so I didn't notice right away that there was a sudden lack of chatter. I was halfway through a sentence about a particular card effect I enjoy using when a stench the likes of which gym locker rooms can only aspire to hit my nostrils. Now listen I'm no shrinking violet when it comes to stink. I have two brothers that had been playing hockey since before I could walk and avoided showering before a big game because it was unlucky. I also had an internship in college that dealt primarily with amphibians and reptiles, not exactly the most pleasant smelling of creatures. This smell though, it was like the most rancid B.O. and a cat box that had never been emptied had a baby on pile of garbage. I think my nose hairs melted back into my face. It was abominable. Ahem. A man said far too close to my back for comfort. Sneer audible in his voice. We are waiting to start, sir. There it was. The cringe was real and I was deep in the thick of it. I straightened up from where I had been leaning against the counter and turned my head to witness the absolute bearditude that had graced us with his presence. This guy was presumably the alpha beard based on the smug look on his face and the fact that all the other beardies were still sat at the table and looking on with horror interest at what was about to go down. He was a ginger fellow, in a pair of those hot topic pants with all the pockets and chains and a heavy metal t-shirt stretched over his generous middle for a band that I'm too much of a pleb to know. The fedora on his head had a smattering of skull patches sloppily glued onto one side. I know it was glued too because it seeped out the sides of the patches, and a red craft store feather poking out of the other. He wasn't wearing a trench coat but I kind of wish he had been because I could see his overgrown pit hair poking out of the sleeves of his t-shirt. His beard was patchy at best, missing his chin almost entirely and looking more like a scraggly pair of mutton chops got too big for their britches. Overall, a very grody sight to behold. I was still too surprised by the appearance of this person, still way too close to my back, 
to really understand what he said. Luckily for me the cashier was in phase. Weekly 40k doesn't start for another 10 minutes, the cashier said without missing a beat. He pointed over his shoulder at the big digital clock on the wall. When that clock hits 5 then I'll start taking names. Everyone's here already. The great beard scoffed, flicking his chin up and making his hat's plumage barble. Stop cavorting with the female and get on with your proper duties. We won't be held up just because you mistakenly think you can score with this lost little waif. There was an honest to goodness gasp from the peanut gallery at the tables. I could tell from the bug eyes and open mouths that they hadn't expect that to come from their fearless leader here. I myself was feeling a little off kilter. I mean I'd never be called a waif before. Has anyone else gotten that one? I'm honestly curious my shock quickly turned to embarrassed anger. I was so ready to rip this guy at least two new buttholes but the cashier beat me to it. I know I don't need to remind you about this store's conduct policies. He said venomously. Obviously this wasn't his first clash with the alpha beard. What you just said is completely unacceptable. I'm giving you your second strike. One more and you're out for the tournament season. Now if you want to play at all today you're gonna go sit down and shut up while help out this paying customer that was here before you. And I'll start 40k when she's done with her purchases. This got the beardy all kinds of steamed up. His face turned so red he looked like a ripe tomato. With how ginger he was it almost looked like his head was on fire. Truly it was a sight. It was clear he wanted to escalate the situation but his gang of groupies realized a losing fight when they saw it and begged him to come back to the table. He gave me one last glare. I'm sure it would have been intimidating if his bottom lip hadn't been quivering ever so slightly. Before turning on his heel and stomping like a toddler back to his seat and flopping into it with a jiggle. I'm so sorry about that. The cashier said to me quietly. My little sister has to deal with the same thing when she goes to Pokemon tournaments and I hate it. That store got back to me though and they do have your game in stock. They also have a weekly tournament for it if you were interested in that. It's just a bit of a drive. Thank you for the help. I said. With the cards and also with him. If you really want to thank me. Pretend to shop for something for a minute. He said with a mischievous grin. I want to make them wait a bit. I happily spent the next 30 minutes loudly hemming and hawing over dice and sleeves. I even had him take out the Yogio singles so I could look through their collection, audibly discussing different strategies I could implement if so and so card was added to my deck. Through it all the alpha neckbud sat getting redder and redder in his seat. The gaggle of subbeard switching between looking at him worriedly and then to me as a flexed my little bit of nerd knowledge with the cashier. I left the shop with a new set of oversleeves, about $25 in rares to start the Link Summon Yogio deck, and the pinkest most glittery dice they carried in stock, along with the address of the next shop in my quest for card games. On my way out I made a point of telling the cashier that I would be sure to tell all my friends that played Warhammer to check out that shop. After all it seemed that their usual weekly group could do with a bit more feminine ingenuity. I ducked out of there with the sound of a furious me heels as the alpha beard finally lost it. I haven't been back since but I'm so curious to know if he got that last strike or not. So this story was by Bunnable on Reddit Neckbeard Stories. She's actually done another story so if you want to hear it like you know just let us know down below. I thought that was a bit different. I love a good cringe story so I do. And I haven't done one in a while so like you know I thought fuck it might as well. I enjoy them. But, uh, no, I must say, like, I'm a big neckbeard. Like, you know, fuck's sake, I call myself neckbeardy on the internet, for God's sake, you know. Um, but at least I'm not that bad. You know, I do have a lot of, like, qualities, or maybe it's a personality type that would fit me definitely into the neckbeard category. But I always like to say, you know, a fedora isn't just a hat, it's a personality type. You know, you can't, you just can't take it off. <laughs> you know, but hey, look, I love a good cringe story. Um, I used to do quite a few of them. I haven't really done one in a while. So, like, if you want to hear her other one, if you enjoyed this one, let us know down below. And, like, I hope you boys enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video. So I've recently moved Nick Beardia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs. Listings are below the video and in the description. So I am an affiliate of NordVPN. If you have been thinking of getting a VPN with everything going on at the minute NordVPN is offering 75% off a 3 year plan. 
I have been using Gnaw myself for a few years now because it helps support a lot of the people I like to watch on YouTube and I think it's pretty cool they have let me become an affiliate. So check out norvpn.org forward slash nickbeardier and use coupon code nickbeardier for 75% off while the offer is on. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop! <laughs>